Hello, I'm Michael Glass from michaelglass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our video, you want to start off with our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So this is our stock market technical analysis trading plan. In our video, we'll look at the past week's economic calendar and also look forward to next week. We'll see what happened as far as the most recent price action to identify key support and resistance price levels. We're going to look at the charts of the market leaders, Apple, Google, Goldman Sachs, Priceline. We'll take a look at those. We'll look at the dollar, gold, and crude oil charts to see if there's any leading sentiment. And finally, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. As we look at the week that was, we can see that all three major indexes, the Dow, the S&P 500, and NASDAQ, fell. Um, certainly not as much as they were, uh, but they, we did once again down. It was a very volatile week. We were down huge at one point. Nine out of the ten sectors fell, with financials basically leading the way, uh, down 5%. Keep in mind, of course, that the S&P 500 is 20, uh, has 23% financials. So if they don't uh, return, then the market won't return. We did, uh, especially on Wednesday, have some more concerns from Europe, some banking concerns in France. They proposed a, a ban on short selling to see if that would stabilize their market. At the end of the week, we had some Bank of America concerns, again, leading financials lower over their countrywide debt and how that was going to uh, affect the overall company. company. Remember, uh, Bank of America bought countrywide back by the Fed back in 2008 as part of that, uh, the 2000 collapse. And, you know, the settlements and the lawsuits and, you know, this debt coming on to the books, uh, what that was going to do. Uh, but we know that the big news of the week started off uh, at the end, uh, end of Friday and over the weekend, we had the S&P downgrade the U.S. debt. You know, the joke that I say about that is that they didn't downgrade the debt or the ability of the United States to repay the debt. They downgraded the politics and the fact that there were people actually saying, go ahead and default. Now, I'm not here to be political and take one side or the other. But what, what I will say is that the dollar grade, the politics, is sort of like uh, Citibank calling me and saying, I'm going to raise your interest rates because my wife and I got into an argument. So that certainly was interesting to me. Uh, the FOMC responded on, on Tuesday with not much. The only thing they really did is get, they gave a specific time frame into 2013 for their low Fed funds rate. Um, and, you know, of course, they're willing to help out, but they really didn't do anything to really spark any type of rally. And then on Wednesday, we had the European bank concerns. So we kind of sold off there. But eventually, uh, we did get a nice rally on Wednesday and Thursday um, with a little leveling off on Friday. Now, Friday was interesting because the market was up, but then we had the Michigan sentiment plunge down to 54.9, 54 which was the lowest level since 1980. So when we look into next week, we really don't have anybody of interest. We have some statements about the consumer note, especially Walmart, maybe even uh, Home Depot. If they say something about the consumer, it might uh, uh, move the market one way or the other as a part of their earnings. Um, and you can see we really don't have anything huge uh, on the economic side. Maybe Philly Fed on uh, Thursday, uh, but we're pretty light on economic data. Uh, so we'll really see the true sentiment of the traders. Are we oversold enough that we'll continue to rally, or is this just a dead cat bounce? And we're going to move lower. So let's go ahead and pull up the charts and take a look. Okay, so we are starting off with the S&P 500, looking at a daily chart. And we can see just the impressive move lower that we've made. We bounced a little bit, and then we breathed a little bit here on Friday. A little resistance of the uh, 10 exponential moving average. We can see with our indicators that RSI reached overbought, moved up. MACD is lagging behind as usual, but started to hook up. And RSI um, is also uh, moving up. So Stokes and RSI 
uh, are starting to hook up MACD lag behind. What's interesting is as we zoom out a little bit, let's go to a weekly, and we can see this hammer forming on the uh, weekly time frame. And I would say that this price level here of about 1200 would be our, okay, uh, maybe we're getting that bounce that we're looking for. Um, again, we've, we retrace back much of that move on Wednesday, so there were, uh, this past week, so we're only down a little over 100 uh, on a Dow uh, and 20 or so on the uh, S&P. So this, we have this hammer, so if we can get above this, then we can start to see a move up towards this 50 moving average. Indicators all still heading lower though, so the indicators are still weak on the weekly. Finally, going all the way out to the monthly, and we can see the support of the 200 moving average. We also saw that back in um, 2010 here. So uh, what we're seeing here is. Uh, if we get back to that 1200, this uh, big red down candle, will, you know, for August, we'll get about half the size. Maybe uh, the 20 moving average might be a little resistance there. But I think 1200 is our, our a little bit comfortable about the bounce. Until then, it's still, uh, you still have to be a little cautious. Our indicators on the monthly are all still heading lower. So monthly, long-term time frame, down, uh, daily time frame, uh, long, and weekly kind of in the middle so uh, we got a little mix so uh, another thing to look at if we do get the 1200 is possibly the the daily uh, getting back in sync with the monthly so we have to be prepared for the market to go each way is this a bounce or is this a dead cow bounce that's going to reverse back on us now switching over to the Nasdaq and going back to our daily We can see um, that, uh, again, a great push down. There's our 10 exponential moving acting as uh, possible resistance. Our indicators basically the same. All Stokes, RSI, MACD, all looking like they're starting to head up, if not already. Uh, when we zoom out, head to the weekly, we can see where, where we're finding that resistance at some past swing high here. Um, 200 possibly as support, 50 possibly as resistance, uh, kind of sideways on our indicators. So we'll go out one more time to our monthly. And we can see uh, the 50 acting as support. Our indicators are all um, still basically uh, saying sell. And so if we get, get above 2507, uh, that will certainly be a little bit better for the bulls, but I would feel even better you know, up here at the 10 moving average, get this candle even more. Uh, and that is around 2670 ish. Uh, well, I would feel a little bit better about the move up. But you can see the difference where the SP is forming a hammer, uh, it had a, a much more dramatic push lower. The NASDAQ is still kind of in its own range. You know, you can still argue that it's not as sold off as the SP 500. As usual, we're going to start off with Apple, and we can kind of see that a lot of Apple and most of our market leaders are in this uh, attempt to rebound what they've given up here. So they're all kind of forming these wedges. And I'm just going to give you an example here of what I'm referring to. So... Uh, we're going to have to watch and see where Apple breaks out to the upside or to the downside out of this range. Let me draw one more line for you. <laughs> I love to draw lines. Um, Amazon. So Apple, we would say sideways. Amazon, uh, kind of the same thing. Definitely uh, a little bit sideways here um, as it's trying to define where it wants to go from here. Uh, let's move on to Google. There again, you can see Google in a wedge in, a, in a, several different ways. So this 50, 540 seems to be a very important price point. You can kind of see our volume at price showing that also a lot of volume at this 540, 530 price level. Uh, Goldman Sachs. 
Goldman Sachs is, is weak, um, not sideways. I, I would say the first three, we can make an argument for sideways, but I think Goldman Sachs, we have to make an argument for uh, being a little weak here. Once it got out of its wedge, uh, it went to the downside and seems to be falling back a little bit. And keep in mind what we said, uh, financials failed 5%, Bank of America, you can see weakness here in Goldman Sachs, did not participate with the move up, financials moved down on Friday. So uh, I would say that's weak. Netflix, uh, Netflix, you can see sort of a descending wedge here. Uh, the 50 million ads, which was golden to buy for so long, uh, did not work. However, the 200 moving average seems to be working, so we'll see if we can break higher uh, above this downtrend line. And finally, um, Priceline, we can see another wedge. Uh, remember, Netflix and Priceline were our, our beast, long-term uptrends, and now they're all sideways. So basically, we have a bunch of sideways. We have Goldman Sachs down, so that certainly doesn't bode well for us. Uh, the leaders are not showing us strength, but I think there is a potential for that. Okay, so uh, as we look at some of our three sentiment indicators, we're looking at the dollar first. And overall, we can see that the dollar is really just in this range, in between 73.50 and up here at uh, 76.50. Really in this range, we broke out of this long-term downtrend, but we didn't break out of it to the upside. We broke out of it to a sideways action. So... Um, we're not really getting any sentiment. I mean, we if, if the dollar's trending down, keeps trending down, the market will move up. If the dollar is moving up, the market will move down. So um, what's no, interesting to note is that as the market sold off, you know, those past two weeks, the dollar did not rally. We got a little bit, but we didn't get this huge move higher. So uh, right now we're in a sideways action, and we're just going to have to wait and see uh, when we can break trend. Uh, as far as uh, gold is concerned, you know, gold looks beautiful, doesn't it? Uh, nice uptrend, obviously. Uh, we had the um, the breakout. This can show you basically where it moved up 100 points <laughs> in basically a, a day. And then uh, uh, we had a two-day pullback here to, to allow the market to breathe. So, again, what we have to watch with gold, and if you're into currency pairs, is that at any minute... Uh, it's not just the releases that you have to watch, but you have to watch the the commentary, like a ban on short selling, uh, like uh, the European European Central Bank saying it's going to do something for the European market, and that will affect gold negatively if it's a positive announcement or vice versa. Finally, uh, crude oil uh, remains uh, weak. Uh, we sold off hard here, and we've got a little retracement. Uh, maybe we'll get back to the 20 moving average, which would align up here uh, with some of the swing lows, too, uh, and allow that resistance to kick into place at $90. Um, but as the market's weak, so is crude. As we come to our education spotlight, we come to one of the most overlooked aspects of your trading plan, and that is only risk the capital that you, you can afford to lose. Uh, as a part of all of our disclosures for all of our videos and any videos that you'll see on the market, uh, you know, YouTube or wherever, they'll talk about, you know, you can lose all your money. And this is one of the overlooked aspects of trading. Uh, people buy strategies, they use strategies that they fully don't understand. And even when they understand them, they don't realize that they may require, A, more capital that you, than you have, or B, that you put a bigger risk, a bigger stop than you can afford to lose. And in a one trade, you blow half your account. Sure, there may be big returns, but if you can't live to, through two trades, then you're risking more than you can afford. So make sure that when you're developing your trading plan, when you're looking at your strategies, it's not just about your targets, it's also about your risk. You know you can find our videos on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We have a page on Facebook, Are You Financially Literate? We have our free five-part uh, video course. It will help you design your own high-probability trading setups. This will give you an insight to how we are as coaches and our coaching sessions where we work with you one-on-one, -on -one, develop a personalized trading plan where we look at your risk and reward and help you build that trader's mindset so you can trade day in and day out. 
sessions as low as $99. Uh, and then we have packages. We also have our video training course where we've got nothing but positive feedback. And again, one of the main reasons is that we're not charging far $5,000 for a course because it's not the course that's going to change you. It's your mindset, which you can get through our coaching sessions. Also, we have a futures broker where you can get intraday margin as low as $300. And finally, uh, you can see we switched our, our charts that we're using. We want to be consistent. So uh, we've got a charting package for you. It works on any browsers, PC and Mac. Uh, check it out. As again, it's not about the system. It's not about the, the room that you're in. It's about the trader's mindset. And that's what we're all about here at Move Mike. Our coaches will help you develop that trader's mindset to be a successful trader. Thanks, guys. And I'll see you next time.